change the plan. I'm leaving the country. I keep having dreams of the pioneers and pirate ships and Bob Dylan. The people wrapped up tight in the things that will kill them. The being trapped in a lift, plunging straight to the bottom of open seas and ways of life we've forgotten. I keep having dreams. Getting to record my interactions, <laughs> but so I just got to the hotel after flying forever. I was going to share an Uber with an Albanian guy and his girlfriend, but they were dragging their feet, so I kind of left them at the airport. I really hope they don't come find me and kill me. But I'm here. I'm going to go to sleep. I have a ferry in the morning. I'm still having dreams. And come morning, I am disappeared Just an imprint on the bed sheets I'm by the roadside with my thumb out A car pulls up, a boat's driving
Room number one, Milos. It's time to go get my ride. As much as I want to go out and do stuff, I'm just exhausted right now. My head's spinning, I don't know if it was the boat or all the planes, jet lag, whatever, but I am unable to get on the ATV and drive back up this mountain right now. I think I'm going to take a nap. This is how I woke up today. That is not enough. You can go first, I'm slow.
Win and a medium sized nav. I'm now in Plaka and trying to have dinner before the sun goes down. Because I have never ridden an ATV before today, and this is a hell of a trial by fire. A few moments later so, <laughs> on this road in the middle of fucking nowhere and the lights on the ATV have gone out so all I have is hazards to see my way back home oh man today has been a day <laughs> Going for a swim. I started taking notes on my second day in Milos, and the very first note, underlined twice, is rough start. I'd woken up feeling groggy, a bit dizzy. I described it at the time as, I think I'm finally getting past the jet lag slash whatever I was feeling yesterday. But about 20 minutes later, I was absolutely leveled by a King Hell case of vertigo. It was no doubt caused by my four-hour enclosed ferry ride over rough seas the day before, but at the time, all I knew was that I wasn't going anywhere. But first, we are going to the moon. My plan for the day, in fact the entire reason I had gone to Milos in the first place, was to visit Sarah Kiniko Strand, what some people call the moon beach. It's this sprawling landscape of white volcanic rock naturally forming these caverns and cliffs and grottos in and around the water below. It's one of the most unique and beautiful seascapes on Earth, and I was a 15-minute ATV ride away. But in the state I was in, it might as well have been the actual moon. I spent the day wallowing in bed, swimming whenever I could get up the energy and trying unsuccessfully to read. Eventually that evening, though, hunger drove me up for a quick and miserable meal in town, surrounded by a whole bunch of happy tourists who clearly had stronger constitutions or at least more resilient inner ear canals than I did. I had a bad day, a bad evening and I was already imagining coming home and having to explain to everyone how Greece had gone bad, how it was a lost trip from the start. But then something surprising happened. I'll let Drunk Keith explain. Okay, 
So, I'll be honest. Today was not a good day. Coming home tonight, I was like, fuck, you know, like, shit, this is not off to a good start, this whole Greek thing. And then, as I was getting home, there was this massive crowd of people like two doors down from me. <laughs> and they flagged me in. They were like, no, you have to sit down right now. And I did, I sat down and they just kept feeding me. I was like, I'm oh, so full, I can't eat anymore. And they just kept feeding me and they were dancing. <laughs> And just like the best people I've ever met and like when we're talking about Greek hospitality like that's what people are talking about I think from what I'm so drunk right now from what I saw this evening the Greek people are beautiful um, and I'm going for a swim Swimming in the water that night, bobbing in the salt of the Aegean and buoyed by really good local wine and liquor, I thought a lot about that phrase, rough start. How before I even left the States, I was beset by a flat tire, broken tools, and Progressive's horrendous roadside assistance service, forcing me to scramble just to make it to the airport in the first place. Now sometimes the world is telling you bad idea bad person. This is going to be a rough trip. But by getting on the plane, getting on the ATV, sitting down with a group of strangers for food and drinks, you can wait the bullshit out and you can turn that rough trip into simply a rough start. How all those things that seem like disappointments at the time can end up serving as underground tunnels, leading you to new experiences and moments that you otherwise never would have encountered. And how, with the right attitude, even the most profound losses, lost days, lost motivation, lost chances and opportunities, can always be found again. landed at the moon.
Seven in the morning, I have to go return the whip and get on an 8 a.m. ferry to the next island. I'm realizing now that I haven't really um, done a whole lot of talking, and that's probably gonna be a problem when I try to edit this. So I, I don't know, I'll figure something out on the boat, I guess. For now, like this entire trip, it seems like I'm just always running low on time.